What's up, squad? Can y'all hear me? Let me know if y'all can hear this. Press one in the chat if you can hear my voice. Come on in. Come and get this. Come and get this. Come and get this. We're about to get started. Josh, can I hear you? I run the numbers up. I don't see no ones in the chat. Okay, there they go. There they go. Okay, all right, all right, all right. I see y'all. Dang. We about to get started. <laughs> we about to get started in just a minute. I ain't gonna make y'all wait three minutes like I did last time. Okay. We about to get started right now. Get ready, because you about to be an ATL. -E <laughs> Get ready, get ready. I'm ready. Are you ready? I've been ready. <laughs> Josh got a microphone. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? People uh, upgrade you when you wear Gucci. People greet you when they meet you. Uh, Period. What? No. You. But I will do that if you were wearing your Gucci. Well, it's even better when I'm wearing your Gucci. <sighs> Anywho, hey y'all, what's up, y'all? What's up, squad? We doing an early live today. An early live today. Uh, while y'all come on in, um, I would love for you to click that like button, please, and thank you. Liking is totally free. I'm about to give y'all some inside details about the legal matter filed by Miss Lanithia Monique leaks okay also um what you got is that it that's all that's the 97 pages right there let me see oh no put that over there we need to move some of the stuff out of this so people don't be thinking we got junky disc oh <laughs> uh, hey y'all okay everybody sees me okay so all those people in the green oh all those people in the green those are our youtube channel sponsors shout out to all our people in the green right now they have their own little special emojis and everything i appreciate all of them for supporting the channel and loving on me okay also uh shout out to my patreon members because they hold it down down okay they hold it down 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 and i would be remiss if i didn't mention my facebook people because we are streaming simultaneously on youtube and the facebook okay shout out to the facebookers and uh yeah and, and shout out to my subscribers because this is a subscribers only chat which means you have to be subscribed to get to participate i mean you know look we, we could agree we could disagree you can say whatever you want to say but you got to be subscribed okay i can't let you come in here talk crazy to me and you won't even show my my channel no love click that subscribe button okay Anywho, hey y'all hey tiggy biggie stop acting up now we got company <sighs> okay you said you listening while working oh, okay f usher not f usher <laughs> what does that mean f usher okay simultaneously thank you 828 Carolyn. now um yesterday okay it was revealed the news dropped that nene leaks have filed finally filed her lawsuit against bravo and all of the real housewives of atlanta executives and producers now uh the news was reporting that you know everything was stemming from what kim zosiak beerman had did Kim Zosia Beerman had used the N word. Kim Zosia Beerman was racist. So Bravo, you know, fostered a, uh, you know, racially hostile environment. Okay. Which is true. It's true, right? It is true. It's true. It's true. But, but what the, uh, a lot of media outlets failed to uh, discuss was uh, it was more to it than just 
Kim Zosi Beerman. Now, if you're an avid reader of Stay From the A.com, okay, you would know I went back to work today. Actually, I went early this morning. I just caught the spirit because I wasn't going to do it. But I was. <laughs> But I had got the, the legal documents, right? And I was thumbing through them. And I was like, see, just like Josh said yesterday on the live, this really ain't got nothing to do with Kim. Not like not they trying to make it look frivolous. Hello. They trying to they trying to put this in a court of public opinion so y'all can be like, this is dumb. This is stupid. So I was like, let me get myself together, honey. I sat in my good old bed. It, it was comfortable too, because I got a a furry weighted blanket and stuff. I was just getting all cozy and stuff. And then I just started typing on my phone. Like instead of speaking on, I could have just spoke it, my dumb ass. I'm up here typing on my phone. Type, type, type. And I just thought, okay, the first paragraph sounded good. Second paragraph sounded even better. Let me go ahead and pull the receipts. Y'all know I love me a good receipt. I'm always in the archives. So before uh, I get into the documents, honey, <sighs> Biggie, chill out. Let me get into this straight from the A article, honey. This is it, some exclusive details straight from uh, the A, okay? Have y'all ever been to that site before? It's a wonderful site. I, I really love it. Straight from the A is a, a very historical archive of all types of things. Oh, look at all them Gucci shoes and stuff up there. It is a historical archive of a lot of different things. Look, last time I wrote on the site was last year. Back when Candy Baby was claiming, Baby Daddy was claiming she was a side chick. And he did it again approximately 12 months later. Ain't that crazy? Ain't that crazy? But anyway, on April 21st, 2022, honey, I broke it down. Exclusive Nene Leaks lawsuits, okay? Breaks down years of racism at Bravo. Who wrote this, Josh? Michelle Brown wrote this. The owner. You sure she wrote this? Can, can Michelle spell? Because I heard some of these bloggers like uh, Lil Boozy and them can't spell. No ghost part of here. <clears throat> I digress. <clears throat> well, um, here's the tea, okay? Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> look, I put my video in there from yesterday. I said I'm a little rusty, okay? I, I, look, I've been running my mouth on the YouTube, okay? However, this situation deserves an old school atl breakdown. Okay, first, I'd like to note that the lawsuit was filed yesterday, April 20th. What's the day? 21st? Okay. In federal court in Atlanta, and many outlets are reporting that NeNe Leaks is suing Bravo for fostering a hostile work environment. Uh, several online reports mention Kim Zosiak Beerman as the main offender. I put man. Ooh, I need typo. Check. Uh, in the leak suit, however, that is not the case. Okay, I obtained a copy of the 97-page document. And upon further review, Zosiak's uh, Beerman's history of racist behavior was listed now, but was listed alongside several other examples. Do you hear me? Yeah. Several other examples. Okay. <laughs> and in a, in a section titled The Historical Culture of Discrimination, NBC and Bravo is, is Bravo Network maintain a corporate culture that is insensitive to black talent and fosters racially offensive behavior that goes unpunished. Now, look, I would be remiss if I didn't pull it up. Uh, oh, I can't even click it, Lord. I'm going to put it up in a minute. Uh, the actual lawsuit. Hold on. I'm going to show you the actual lawsuit because you know I get it. You know I get it. Um, over here, it's on a different, it's on a different slide. Hold on, Lord, hold on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the lawsuit, um, you can see that she is not just suing Bravo, True Entertainment, and Andy and NBC. In fact, your girl is suing damn near everybody. Lanithia, Monique, Nene Leakes, honey. And you know that, you know, it's, it's been filed, honey. It's been filed. She's suing NBC Universal Media, NBC Universal LLC, Bravo Media, Bravo uh, Media Corporation, True Entertainment LLC, True Entertainment Inc., Truly Original LLC, Andy Cohen, an individual, Sherry Levine, an individual, Steven Weinstock, 
an individual, Lauren Escalin, an individual, and Doles. Ooh, one through 25 exclusive defendants. So she got some John Doles and Jane Doles in there, at least 25 of them in the lawsuit. And y'all talk about it's just Kim. It's just she didn't name Kim. Well, you know, Kim may be one of them Jane Doles. <laughs> well, you know what's interesting to me? What? That these are some heavy hitters. Like Sherry, mm -hmm. she is a VP and she was just promoted to Oxygen Media. And also, she works for NBC and ABC news segment. Ooh. Meaning, when somebody says they're black ball, not I can't just work for Bravo or NBC. Uh -huh. It's across the board. So that's why you had when she said, oh, I've been black ball. It just doesn't mean just Bravo and she only mad because she can't be on Housewives. <sighs> Dig into it now. Dig into Steven it. Steven Weinstock is also a president of Truly Entertainment. Mm -hmm. Lauren is also an executive vice president of Truly Original. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So you got to know who the people are. Cheryl Levine? Yes. Mm -hmm. So listen, listen, listen. I'm going to get into the document. We're going to be breaking down the docs now. But before I break down the docs, I'm breaking down this blog post since I took my time and wrote it. Get into it. <laughs> get into it. So um, <clears throat> let, me fin let me go back to the document. So, listen, y'all know I got receipts over there on Straight From The A, right? So, you know, we was talking about, you know, we're going to bring Kim up, okay? I said in, the, in in my post, it should be noted that Kim Zosiak Beerman is merely used as an example of a Caucasian person in a similar position as Leeks, who is Black, that has been awarded for her privilege. Awarded for her bad behavior. Awarded for being racist. She's used as an example. Now, this might go over some of y'all heads. Y'all see, I speak, I, I blog the way I talk, okay? This may go over some of y'all's heads, especially if you aren't a fan of this blog. However, I personally documented several instances where Kim's behavior displayed blatant racial undertones, okay? In fact, I was sent a cease and desist for calling it out. Now, y'all know. This is straight from the A.com. We do, um, we go to the archives around here, okay? Now, listen. And this, y'all remember when Kim sent me a, 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 a cease and desist? In, in 2018, Kim Zosiak Beerman sent little old me straight from the A.com a, a cease and desist and wanted me to know and wanted me to tell my people that she is not racist, honey. In fact, she had went to Gucci Mane's wedding, so she can't possibly be racist. Kim loves black people. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I call her KKK Kim, Kim Croy and their kids, honey. They got an attorney to send me over a five-page letter, a five-page letter. And I ain't gonna go through the whole thing because I, I did a whole um, live talking about it. But in this five-page letter, which my attorney reviewed and also said it was some bullshit, she noted a bunch of the things that she did during the damn um, season. She noted uh, calling out Needy, talking about that she didn't want to go over there because they were eating watermelon and chicken. She noted all of the things. She noted the, the incident with the cockroach. She noted all of that. So if y'all want to read it, y'all want to go back in time and talk about it and whatever the case may be it's all in black and white on straight from the a now in addition to this in addition to this i would be remiss if i didn't mention since you know we starting with kim that incident that infamous incident in season five where she uh Slap the camera out of the cameraman's hand. Y'all remember that? Y'all probably don't remember that. Y'all y'all could not possibly remember that. Kim was pregnant. She decided she was ready to go. She slammed the camera out of the cameraman's hand and she said she can't work with these N-words. Allegedly. <laughs> she said she could not work with these N-words. Now, again, <clears throat> You know, this is what good bloggers do. And let me just show you. Good bloggers will show you the receipts. 
Um, back then, I was, you know, I was very dedicated. And I was blogging every episode of The Housewives. I was putting the videos up. I was talking about it. I was breaking down the episodes step by step by step. And one of the, um, I was talking about Kim saying the N-word. Now, again, y- y'all know, you know, I have my sources. I can say, you know, with certainty that Kim said it. But look, there go tweet that I wrote December 10th, 2018. I said, I don't think Kim Zosiak would be dumb enough to say the N-word. But the fact that we can't say with certainty that she didn't says a lot about her. Well, we know she said it, allegedly. We know she said it, though. That was the point. I was, just, you know, I was kind of covering my ass. Right. I'll see why. So um, that's on the internet as well. Okay. That's on the internet as well. But um, I just wanted to let y'all know that um, there is a lot of things that have been documented that are uh, also on the internet, okay? Not just in lawsuits, not just word of mouth, just not just sitting on YouTube talking about it. It is in black and white. Now, I'm going to continue because, you know, again, like I said, Kim ain't the only one, but she's a pertinent part of this because, as I've always said, uh, KK Kim is a, a token. She was the token Caucasian woman on the cast of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Uh, at the time of that incident that I just spoke of, several of the ladies banded together, y'all heard me say this before, to complain. Uh, and the production company and the network did nothing, absolutely nothing about Kim slamming the cameraman. Out the, you, Croy was there being, you know, Croy standing back there, you know, trying to intimidate people. <laughs> Kim there slamming the camera around and the production company did nothing at the time. I did a story about how the remaining housewives refused to work until Kim Zosiak was reprimanded and preferably booted from the show. It should be noted that instead of disciplinary actions for her racist actions and words, Kim was removed from the cast of RHOA and blessed with her own show titled don't be tardy i have a question go ahead young so was this the first time someone attacked the camera a cameraman on camera was it i don't know this was the first time for housewives that was the first time because that was well before nene drug the man out okay okay i just want to make sure so she got promoted Uh, after she attacked the cameraman okay okay i just want to keep track and make sure we on the same page okay so she could attack the staff and be fine Mm -hmm. And no one was scared of her. No one said, oh, my God, I'm scared. Mm-hmm. Nobody said that. But, yeah. Nobody said they were scared. Okay. Nobody said they were scared when when Croy had a gun in his pocket okay. at the reunion. Nobody said they were scared when Kim was blaming Sheree that she couldn't work around these African-Americans and she blamed Sheree. Ooh, let's pull that up. Hold on. I love, look, we ain't got nothing but time. I love pulling up history and, you know, bringing up facts that y'all may have forgotten. Now, uh, y'all remember during the season 10 reunion, Kim Zosiak, we talked about this on Patreon last night. Kim Zosiak uh, claimed that racism was not real before social media. So no, no slavery, no civil rights era. No, 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 no. This happened once. Social media became part of And if you think about it, all of this has been going on 2018, 2017, 2016, 2015, 2012. You know, people have been, you know, talking about, wait a minute, wait a minute, this 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 Caucasian chick called us the N-word. Wait a minute, wait a minute, this Caucasian chick, you know, gets to, you know, run rampant and, and tell people that she won't film. This Caucasian chick did all that. And then she came on the show did little to no work, had Sheree as her minion, and Sheree got fired, and she went on to her own show. But wait, I have a question. Didn't he also had a clip where Andy took up with him and was like, oh, yeah, you're right, and then he went on uh, the Breakfast Club and said, oh, he belongs to be at the dunk hill today when he wore his jogging suit. <sighs> okay, hold on, hold on. Here's... um. I'm gonna show you this, okay? This is what Kim said. Uh, she didn't feel that racism existed before social media. That's come and gone, but the last three this minutes is, this of is the my, reunion um, will be talked about 
for my video. Never. Let's get oh, no, into it. We don't look at the video after Kim Zosiak's negative energy left the stage. But her backstage meltdown is what really brought her true character to light. Yes. Oh my I god. Love. It's Thanks, everybody. It's a wrap, honey. It's a wrap. Honey, Andy, you She just wants to talk to me. Oh, okay. Lord have mercy. Yes. Kim? I remember this. Like, how much can a person take? Why was why was wait? Why was Croy in the bathroom? Why was Croy in the lady's bathroom? Maybe that was my dressing room. With his gun. <laughs> okay, hold on. What, I, there wasn't even one positive question for me. It was hammered. Like I didn't think it was all bad. You have the control yeah. to say stop. Bitch knows I'm not racist. Nene knows I'm not racist. You know what? I you agree. have not found another white woman to sit on that mother because nobody's dumb enough to do that. <laughs> Wait, I gotta, we gotta be a little bit. Mean. You know why you can't find another token white? Because nobody's dumb enough to do it. Nobody. All of this is in black and white. It, it's, it, it's recorded. Hold on, we're gonna listen. Trey, I'm so upset with you. <laughs> and wait, it's the, instead of blaming. <laughs> Everybody are blaming Andy, the white man. Right. Kim and her white lady tears blame Sheree Whitfield. Yes, like I just didn't feel like. Wait, wait, it's the tears. Yeah. Me? Yes, like I just didn't feel like you stuck up for me or helped me with them ganging up on me. Even Sheree knew it was bullshit, but Sheree's stupid, so we gonna let her pass. <sighs> I don't want you to feel like that. I don't. I definitely don't want you to feel like that. I did have Portia. Portia stuck up. I just didn't feel like you were really sticking up. I was trying to grab Kenya, telling her to stop, but she was really going at uh, your kids. She wouldn't stop. I and I don't know if I expected you, you to just stop. Put I thought it all yeah. even before you got out there. I'm not here to fight nobody's battle. But Nene has everybody around. I, I honestly, that was horrible. Like, put yourself in my shoes. Why is the race sitting up there? Okay. Uh, okay, tap dancing. Okay, five okay. African American women just hammered. I, I couldn't even speak. Like my mind's a whirlwind. Five African American women. This whole racism thing in this day and age is bullshit. Racism is bullshit. It's what the lady said. Is that not what she said? She said it's all BS. No, there's no racism. This day and age is all BS. This is in 2018. Mm. This is before George Floyd, mm. Rihanna yeah. Taylor. <sighs> like the, every one of those motherfuckers on that couch owe this world of f***ing apology for this racism. They are all the black ladies on that couch owe the world an apology for this racism shit. <laughs> Tried to claim that shit long ago, Sheree, as you know. Nobody really bought into it because the social media wasn't there and racism wasn't f***ing all that real. Racism really wasn't real. Y'all don't remember this. Y'all remember this. Okay, hold on. Right here is when Sheree should have said something. <laughs> you know what? What would you like me to have done? There wasn't a positive question. Like, I have a very successful marriage. I have beautiful children. There was nothing positive. Well, guess what? I got to tell you something. There was also, there was nothing positive, unfortunately, in your story from the season. It was all combative. It was because your whole time on the show was combative. It was. She raised <laughs> But it's all Sheree's fault. Sheree, you should have took over for me. All these black women, all these black women were all in my face. All of these African American black women were yelling at me. It was at this moment that Sheree knew she had been played. Um. She got a hug and Sheree got a dap. See you. You out. <laughs> the door is the back door is that way. Kim got a whole hug. So glad this is over. So I just use that as an example of um one incident. What do you think about that incident, Josh?
Jeff Bezos. It's amazing how he got away with it. Then, I mean, social media caught on to it, and people giving Andy a little flack about it, but not the way they dragging Nene for saying they're saying that she was mistreated. She's expressing legally her experience, and we are sitting there saying she doesn't have the right to feel that way. Okay. The same way we did Monique. Monique stood her ground and look where she's at now. I say, Nene, go, Nene, go. Okay, well, you know, as my post says, that was just one of the many incidents noted on Leak's 97 page lawsuit, but it definitely supports the reality show vet's long list of complaints. And in my opinion, speaks to the imbalance of power between persons in similar positions. Hell, we could look at the imbalance of power between Sheree and 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 Kim in that situation. Right. Kim still got the praise. Kim got everything she wanted. Kim got a hug from the boss, and Sheree got fired. <laughs> but she back. She back now. Why is she back this season? Is it because Nene filed a lawsuit? She is the one that they can pick up and put down when they like. Oh. No one's gonna consistently fire me, and I keep coming back. Ooh. It's just not what's gonna happen. Ooh, ooh! Look, Daniel Barker asked a question. Do you think do you guys think they brought Sheree back to provoke Nene into doing something? I, I don't think so. No, Sheree ain't got that kind of Sheree, power. Sheree, yeah, Sheree. Nobody cares about Sheree. Um, Nene, know what her damn mama was. Who the hell gonna be upset about something with Sheree? Doing? But wait, can we look at this apology? Look, Kim had even apologized to Nene after that episode. I'm going all deep in the archives, honey. We just look at her and we got an omission of guilt, is what I'm hearing. Is that, is that what it was? Yes, I would love to read it. Let's go. From okay, from the let's go over here. <laughs> but this was always there. Why well, I had to point you out, point you to um, it. You always need to keep okay, okay. So, um, look, ass, I, I, know, I, I, I've been getting paid, but that's all. Right. Girl, you. bye. Kim's dossier, Beerman issued a public faux apology. To Nene Leaks and Nene responded. This was April of 2018. This was right after that reunion where she claimed that racism didn't exist and she was blaming Nene for coming at her. But Nene was like, Where is your scooter? Where is it, <laughs> Where is it honey? Um, here it is right here. She said, uh, I am so sorry for what has happened, Nene Leaks. We both know the truth. We both know that if I wanted to, I could have a lawsuit for the lies you have spewed, tweeting out fake texts implying i am racist attacking me physically claiming my daughter tweeted negative about you and your home we both know these are lies i have reacted to it publicly and for that i am sorry i should have risen above it i personally would no longer engage with you on social media and perpetuate the hate i'm asking you to do the same we're grown women with families enough is enough and this is the same season where kim zosia claimed nini was on drugs this is the same season that Kim Zosiak claimed that there was roaches in the lady house. And Nene said that, you know, the roach must have fell out of Brielle, dirty pee nunny. Okay. And here's what Nene has said. You can never win when you play dirty. So throw in the towel. I mean, throw in the lips. Anytime you want to go to court, I'm happy to see you there because your lies have run it over. Please file a lawsuit, child. Like, I'm begging you. Kim still ain't filed a lawsuit. And like I told you, she sent me that cease and desist, and I ain't seen no lawsuit either. You see what I'm saying? Because she's racist. KKK Kim is it's racist. It's another form of the Caucasian intimidation. Oh. If you're not smart, maybe you fall for it. Okay. You see what I'm saying? But wait, we on Kim. But listen, I still haven't finished. Hold on. I'm still reading the post. I ain't even got to the documents yet. So um, later in my long ass post, okay. Uh, I wrote about how um, uh, in another section of the lawsuit details other incidents at the network and claims that NBC's corporate culture permeates its sister station, Bravo TV, which televises racially segregated workplaces in which racially insensitive and inappropriate conduct is condoned and allowed to fester, often created discriminatory and hostile work environments for diverse talent who are working in their workplaces. In that section, there are several other housewife franchises mentioned that have faced criticism for racial incidents. Should I pull up that section? I'm waiting. Okay, hold on. Oh, go. He said go. <laughs> hold on, let me let me let me pull up that section. Y'all keep y'all keep talking about um 
that uh, it was only Kim Dosiak that, that the, you know, the problem was is that uh, Bravo and True have racially segregated the Real Housewives franchises for years. Now, in this part of the lawsuit, hold on, I'm putting it in here for y'all. Eh, 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 eh. Like I told y'all, it's 97 pages. We're going to have to do this like three, four, five, ten times, okay? Um, okay, look. Uh, for years, NBC and Bravo have run the Real Housewives as the se segregated franchise where certain shows are treated as white shows and others as black with little, if not any, overlapping or mixing between the two. The segregated nature of the franchise is reminiscent in the early days of separate but equal. That is, the shows are racially separ separated, purported to be equal, but in fact, they are not. Some, but not all, of the examples of segregation within the franchises are discussed below. So um, she got a list of all of the different um, housewives and how... They got their first black housewife in 2021, or they got their first black housewife in 2022. Like she talked about Orange County, it was white for 15 seasons. Got their first black housewife in the 16th season. She talked about the real housewife New York. Uh, they were racially segregated and dominated by white housewives. It took them 13 seasons for the real housewives of New York to finally have a black housewife on the show. She talked about, listen, uh, the third franchise, RHOA, was also largely racially segregated, but in the opposite direction. Based out of Atlanta, Georgia, RHOA was dominated by Black housewives with one notable exception discussed in detail below Kim Zosiak Beerman. Now, we already talked about how Kim was the token white girl from season one. Season one, they forced Kim down our throat simply because they didn't want to have all Black girls on one show. Tiki said, shout out to one and only blog goddess for always bringing the true tea. Thank you so much. Uh, DT said, trailer park trash, Kim, queen, wiggle, no scooter, all the diseases in her body. Foolish, she broke and overdue by three years. Boomerang. Child, DT, you be having my, my breath, uh, out of breath. Boomerang, Whitfield, and she broke, got definitely played. Okay, thank y'all for the super chats. I appreciate you. I appreciate you, and I appreciate you okay you said black people live in orange county well they didn't for 16 years according to bravo yeah, but black i'm digressing okay so um hold on hold on, hold on. let me find the part where we was about to talk about uh who in and her um her issues okay uh oh she also talked about real housewives of beverly hills um real housewives of what is rhod Our HOD aired for oh Dallas aired for five years. Was it Dallas? Right I didn't watch yeah, it. <laughs> Initially premiering in 2016, in its five year run, it did not have a single black housewife on the show. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills franchise uh, ran continuously since 2010. The cast was almost entirely racial, racially homogenous white women for over a decade. The sole exception. In the initial decade was one season, 2013, during which Joyce Gerard, a Latina, appeared on the show. It was not until Garcelle Bouvier uh, joined the cast in season 10, which aired in 2020, that the show had its first Black housewife. So it goes on a historical tour of uh, the Housewives franchises and, you know, how they fostered, again, a notorious... A system of segregation within its franchise. Now, it also talked about, it said, um, rather, another one of the many examples of uh, Beverly Hills spinoffs is Vanderpump Rules. For many years, Vanderpump Rules had a notoriously non diverse white cast. In the nine seasons it premiered, since its January 13th premiere, it only had two black cast members. Uh, Tina McDowell and Faith Stowers. More specifically, in 2015, there was an attempt at diversifying with the hiring of Faith Stowers, a black woman. According to Ms. Stowers, Lisa Vanderpump hired her to work at the restaurant. When I first got there, Lisa did have a sit down with me and her publicist. According to Ms. Stowers, they just told me straight up, we don't have a lot of color on this show and you would make a good asset to that. 
Ooh, <laughs> it's receipts in here. Um, in Miss Stower's view, her casting was less about legitimately and genuinely diversifying the show and more about Lisa Vanderpump's public image as an equal opportunity employer. I kind of knew going into it that I would be filling in for the spot of like showing that she hired a person of color. <sighs> as I said before, this ain't just about Kim Zosiak, okay? This is not just about Kim Zosiak. There's another, I haven't even gotten to Luann yet. Uh, Bravo Sir Southern Charm is another example which involves wealthy socialites living in Charleston, South Carolina. Historically, over a quarter of the population of Charleston has been black. Yet, though the show has run since 2014, it has never had a black cast member. What? Only recently in October 2020 did the show make headlines by announcing that season seven would finally have a, a housewife or a person of color, uh, Leva Bonaparte, who is Persian. But as we discussed below, Ms. Bonaparte's experience on the show is consistent with the plight of other people of color who have also worked for Bravo. This is deep. It's a whole lot. Hold on, hold on. Where is the um? I want to talk about Luann. Oh, here it is. That is the next. One. Okay, so this is number six. NBC Bravo and True foster a corporate and workplace culture in which racially insensitive and inappropriate behavior is tolerated, if not encouraged. Hold on. Thank you so much, Quasia. Quasia said my great uncle was a student in the separate but equal trials. God rest his soul. Thanks straight from A. You're welcome. Thank you, Quasia. I appreciate you. Um, for years, NBC, Bravo, and True have fostered a corporate and workplace culture that has permitted and tolerated, if not encouraged, racially offensive and insensitive conduct, statements, and actions by their employees. This is seen in repeated instances of such behavior occurring by their employees and cast members without any meaningful consequence, corrective action, or rem remediation. In fact, it is as if NBC, Bravo, and or True have simply ignored and or turned a blind eye to the fact that they have, that they talent, that they, the talent who works on their shows are also working at their workplaces. And talent like anyone working at, in their workplace have a right under the law to a workplace free from discriminatory and harassing conduct based on the color of their skin as well as the right to speak up and raise concerns of perceived to be discriminatory or harassing treatment without being retaliated against for doing so. And ignoring the fact that, that the set of their shows is a workplace for those who work on the show, NBC, Bravo, and or True have consistently allowed racially inappropriate, insensitive, or offensive behavior from the cast members to go uncorrected and unremedied some of the many examples, here's some more, uh, which is a non-exhaustive list offered merely for illustration purposes and not by way of limitation or exhaustion. Now, here we come with, uh, during season 10's premiere of Real Housewives of New York that aired April 2018, Luann, what's her name? Luann De La Steps. Luann De La Steps appeared at a Halloween costume party with her skin tone several shades darker than usual and wearing a two-foot-tall wig claiming to be dressed as Diana Ross. The wig did not resemble Diana Ross's classic curls. It was instead a stereotypical offensive representation. It was a big-ass afro, honey. After she was called out on the racially insensitive representation, De La Seps denied doing anything wrong and justified this cultural insensitivity. Neither NBC nor Bravo publicly repudiated or disavowed De La Seps racially insensitive behavior. Y'all remember that? Let me pull up a picture just so y'all can see it. Hold on. What's the lady name? Luann. Okay. Okay. Images. This up right here. Damn. This is her right here with her Afro wig on, honey. 
saw uh, they said uh, a lot of people said she was in blackface. You know, she was trying to, you know, she had on an Afro wig, honey. Thought she was doing the most. It looked like they lightened up one picture, but that's her right there. What y'all had thought about it? What y'all thought about it? Do y'all think that that was something that Bravo should have called her out on? Put a one in the chat if you think that that was an offensive display. Or press six if you think that, you know, whatever. It was just a party. <laughs> they couldn't, they couldn't care less. Even her white pound of protestant, that's the one that called her out. And she just said, mm, Really? Her white pound of part, her casting was called her out. And, and she her never out. made a policy. She never made a policy. Just short for short. Oh, okay. Interesting. Isn't that interesting, though, when you compare um, things that have happened on the housewives? Remember, Kenya had on the dang Indian headdress, and they made they forced her into a public apology, and they deleted it from the show. Is is this scene of her in the alleged blackface still in the show? Uh-huh. But then, I mean, they didn't recognize it. You can go right now. Who's gonna find it? Oh, wow, that is crazy. Okay, yes, this is the expose day for me. Okay. But wait, that's not the only incident that uh, Luann was involved in, okay? Um, oh, this is in the lawsuit as well. It's not the first time Luann De La Steps exhibited racially offensive or insensitive behavior. Another example occurred all the way back in a 2012 episode, season five, episode 10. Y'all write this down in case y'all need some receipts. Season five, episode 10, where during a wine tasting event, she referred to Native Americans as Indian and mockingly smacked her lips with her hand while emitting a woo 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 war whoop in an insulting gesture. Yes. She did it. She said woo 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 woo. And it's in, look, I'm saying that because it's in the uh, documents as woo 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 woo. Hold on, let me show you so y'all don't think I'm making this up. Panty. Hold on. Got too many windows. Okay. What's it called, child? Emitting a woo 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 woo. You see that woo 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 woo. War whoop in an insulting gesture. Co-star Carol Ratswill had to intervene to the point to point out that it was both outdated and offensive to a group that has been discriminated against and abused. Neither NBC nor Bravo publicly repudiated or disavowed De La Steps' racially insensitive behavior. Now, isn't that, a, isn't that crazy how they never said nothing? However, they they damn near fired Kenya Moore for wearing a headdress. She wasn't sitting up there making gestures and, and doing war chants. It's crazy. What, what is happening? But Kenya ain't saying nothing, though. So, I mean, she happy. I'm happy. Let me see. Let me pull it up. What's it called? Luann and the Indian? See, I don't watch these other franchises, so I wouldn't know. Uh, 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 Where is it? That's Kenya. Is that it? Is this it right here? Oh, okay. Let me pull it up. Native American versus Indian. Is this yeah. it? Uh-huh. Let me see if I put this in here. Hold on. Let me put my disclaimer up. You know, Bravo going to take my shit down. <laughs> you know, Bravo going to take my shit down. Hold on. Uh, y'all know what we're doing. We're doing research around here. Okay. Copyright disclaimer. Copyright disclaimer. Under Section 107 of the Copyright Act, allowances made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, commenting, news reporting, and teaching. We are what? We are researching. Oh, wait. She did it right now. I can't hear it, though. Hold on. No, she's not just saying India. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, what are you doing? What? No, but her family did in scalp. They only burned down your houses and <laughs> I'm with you. What? I would say Indian is Native not American. Decent. I don't know. Everyone over third grade. Well, Jack always calls me his wild Indian, so. I'm not ready for this. 
I thought they were making fun of people who have a history of being neglected, discriminated against, abused. Wow. And that is not something you joke about. I, I, I think they only call them Aboriginal people in Canada. Canada is full of American Indians, I call them, Native Americans. She says you can't oh. say Indians. Right. Oh. I think the point was that Native American versus Indian, and no one says so Indian really anymore Indian because Indian it's politically Apple incorrect. Indian. Well, nobody uses darling anymore, but I still use it because I guess I can because I am an Indian. Everybody's going American Indian, Native American. I'm going to a museum in Washington called the American Indian Museum. <sighs> GD, thank you for the super chat. Said fans were outraged when they ganged up on my favorite Garcelle last season after Garcelle threatened to quit. Bravo magically added Sher Sherry Zampino. Mm. Mm. <sighs> oh, Garcelle is playing for me. Cat playing for the main. I wasn't going to say it. But if you say it. I mean, that's just my personal opinion. But wait, there's another one. Luann. Look, they should have put Luann's name up up there next to uh Kim's because they got another example occurred in a December 2019 episode of RHO. Oh, this is somebody else. Yeah, RHOD when Leanne Lockin made racially offensive statements about co-star Carrie Brittingham during a trip to Thailand. Britting Brittingham, who joined the cast in season four, was the first Mexican woman on RHOD, having grown up in Guadalajara, Mexico. Following a night out in Bangkok's red light district, Lockin stated the following about Brittingham. That effing C something wants to prove how effing tough she is because she's from Mexico. Continuing her racially offensive rant about Brittingham, Lockin said the little chirpy Mexican has to have her way. And so she she drug everyone there. Lockin also made the stereotypical offensive statement that Brittingham was supposed to act all Mexican and strong. Finally, Lockin referred to speaking Mexican, which of course is not a language. Neither NBC nor Bravo publicly repudiated or disavowed Lockin's racially insistent behavior. Ooh, I'm still reading. I'm still, what you think about that one, Josh? I remember when it happened. I mean, you know, you can be so accustomed to stuff, stuff go over your head. It's like if somebody curses around you, you're not alarmed because it's so you're so used to people cursing. Mm -hmm. It's nothing that'll alarm you. So if you're used to a racial environment and racially expensive words sent around, you're nothing alarmed because you're used to it. Oh, okay. Here's another incident. Real Housewife of Dallas, Cameron Westcott, participating in a racially offensive conduct. Uh, in the presence of or directed at her co-worker, Dr. Tiffany Moon, who is Asian. In one instance, season five, episode two, uh, which aired January 12, 2021, the ladies attended a dim song party during which Dr. Moon introduced foods and traditions from her Asian culture, including a tasting of chicken feet. Westcott refused to eat chicken feet, even mentioning she'd rather eat ASS and placed the chicken feet on the floor. Dr. Moon said the move was racially offensive or culturally insulting. Westcott was not deterred. She took to Instagram proclaiming that she would rather eat dog food than chicken feet. Neither NBC nor Bravo publicly repudiated or disavowed Westcott's racially insensitive behavior. I'm, what? I remember this episode when they talked about Abby, Abby K. Williams. Okay, you you want to read it? Another recent example occurred in the most recent season 13 of Real Housewives of New York. In May 2021, Abby K. Williams was introduced to New York Housewives, first black housewife ever. Williams soon observed and reported racially offensive conduct and, and or statements by long-term white housewife Ramona Singer. Public reports suggest that Singer had made racially inappropriate remarks about black people, including stating, this is why we shouldn't have black people on the show. Singer made a remark after White Housewife Luanne Dillisip kicked uh, Williams out of Dillisip's house. Just like Singer, White House of Dillisip has a history of racial inappropriate behavior, including some detail above, and also including Williams calling Williams a angry black woman. You know, you might want to know. No, really? I'm talking to this. Mm 
the whole time it was on. Oh. Right now. Can yeah, you guys hear me? <laughs> Your mic wouldn't even though. But I guess they can hear you. I don't know. Um, so look, it goes on and on and on, and it has several different incidences of racism within the NBC and or Bravo franchise. Ebony was sitting at a table and this white girl, one of the castmates, has said, you know, all you girls are nothing but old hoes. Ebony said, you know, I am the most educated at this, formally educated at this table. Like I have a law degree. No one here has a law degree. And Luann looked at us and said, you're so angry. Why are you so angry? She's like, this lady just called, this white girl just called you all hoes and you guys said nothing to her and you telling me that I'm an angry woman. She was like, yeah, that's a triggering word for me. Goodbye. Wow. Oh, listen, we've been reading this for 50 whole minutes. Again, this is uh, Breaking Down the Docs, part one. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me finish with my the rest of my article. Since, you Go know, back straight from that. Okay, hold on. Try this. this oh, these documents are killing me. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy, for the super chat. Thank you so very much. Um, okay. Let's see what Tracy said. Tracy Renee Rivera says, "Why doesn't Candy or Kenya realize Andy is using them against Nene, and they are stupid? Their time is coming as well." Listen, that's where I'm about to go with this. Okay, in the article, which you can read on straight from the A, the link is in the description box. I just wanted to to say. That for the records, uh, Nene Leakes complained to executives over the years about several things she felt were inadequate over her years of working on the popular reality show. And according to her claims, in return, she received less episodes. Sorry, y'all. We froze. I apologize. Hold on a second. I'm running too many things on my computer. And my computer said, no, 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 ma'am. Not today. Hold on. Technical difficulties. Talk amongst yourselves while I bring up this computer. Dance a little. Go grab a snack. Go ahead and like this video. And we will continue our um reading in just a second like subscribe and share all of that Y'all hear me? Okay, we good. Can y'all hear Josh? Your thing keep going off for some reason. It's probably the battery. Oh no. You had to make sure that blue light is on. Oh, am I bad? <laughs> we bad. My apologies. My apologies. Y'all over there doing the snake. Hey. Hey. Hold on. Let me turn off the porn on me. Okay, so um, 
some of the other things that um i wanted to touch on before we uh left was uh in my report i don't know where i left off at but i basically was talking about um in her claims uh leaks complained to executives over the years and several about several things that were going on uh, that she felt were inadequate and according to um the lawsuit in return she received less episodes of speaking out about racism and unfair treatment when it became evident that she was being retaliated against by the network leaks chose to speak out in hopes speak out publicly in hopes that there would be some conversations behind the scenes unfortunately there were others that undermined her efforts and it seems that executives took full advantage of the divide and conquer tactics that have been often used against black people in similar situations. Absolutely. You know how they work. How they work, Josh? Crabs in a bucket. Crabs in a bucket? What they yeah, gonna do? Just like, you know what? Since you'll speak out, you take out a retaliation, I go into the office. So why do I have a problem with that? And then in the break room, we all talk about with all the major issues going on. But I'm telling you, there's so many text messages and emails out there to support her accusations that they're gonna hate they ever think of that lady. Mm-hmm. What's crazy is too that um, we as Black Americans often go through this, where you know we're so scared to lose our jobs. Like we'll, you know, somebody will speak up, or we'll all be complaining together in the break room. But they shouldn't do this. We need to get together and do this. I eat them them text messages with portion them, but I digress. But you know, we should all get together. We're stronger in numbers. But as soon as one person say, "You're right," we're gonna speak up. You know, let's do it. And then the one person speak up, and then everybody cower behind them because the boss, the employer, makes that one person an example. Like, oh, okay, that's how you feel. Oh, we're gonna take your hours. We're right. gonna stop your pay. Right. We gonna cut you. You only gonna work two days a week instead of five. You won't get that promotion. You're not gonna get no bonus this year. <laughs> and so everybody starts seeing that and then they back up oh, oh i need my money i got bills to pay i got mouths to feed i got children at home I, nah, uh. so a lot of you know big employers do that they use one person to stop you know the 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 the, the, the masses from <laughs> from uh protesting hell they, they did it during slavery too let me go whip this one over here as a as a as a sign you know that this is what happens when you go against us. But I digress. You're right, Cher. Fall in line. Fall in line. Fall in line. Exactly. But people don't see that. Y'all don't see that. See, I went through it at my job. That's why this is kind of close to the chest to me. Because I feel like, you know, I was that person who was burnt at the stake <laughs> and took all the guns, took all, took everything. And then I, you know, I got fired. I had to file a lawsuit, all of that. While wow, the people who stayed there benefited <laughs> from me speaking out, because what happens is they go the good black people that's still there and, and keep it quiet. I eat candy, you know. They get they get um, benefits from it, you know. They get rewarded for for you know shutting up. Oh, we racist around here. We show sure is, but if you don't say nothing, if you a good little girl, let me give you some more money. Right. <laughs> so. Y'all need to pay attention. That's all I know. I know some of you are a little young and y'all ain't been through a lot yet, but yeah, racism is real out there. So um, in my article, I also state how how deep, yes, the sacrificial lamb, thank you so much, Anita D, how deep the uh, rabbit hole goes. And so um, I said, in fact, if y'all recall, while Nene was being publicly praised and paraded by the network as the quote unquote face of Bravo, why Andy was tweeting out that that the housewife was the house that Nene built. These are things that Andy said, right? They had a big old picture of Nene in the lobby when you come in. You know, everybody knew the housewife of the franchise. Nene was the face of the franchise. Um, and she was constantly being reported, reported. That's the key word, reported as the highest paid. She was actually being phased out. Now, <coughs> Fans begin to notice, y'all remember this, many seasons ago, that in the beginning of certain seasons, we wouldn't see Nene Leaks. Everybody was looking for Nene. Where Nene at? Why she didn't start the season? She didn't show up to episode three. What's going on? And they was trying to portray her as the diva, you know, looking for more money or more benefits 
or whatever. But the gag is, it was Nene would have been complaining about all these things going on, have been asking for certain things, have been asking for health care for you know, everybody has been asking for stipends and reimbursements for all the ladies paying glam, have been asking for certain things. And because she had been very vocal and she felt like, you know, hey, I'm the face of the network, maybe they'll listen to me. What Bravo do, they start taking money away. And in taking money away, they didn't necessarily take it off the contract. They took it off the episodes. So if you get paid per episode, but you're getting paid however million per uh, per uh, uh, season, and you only get, you know, however five episodes or whatever, you're not actually getting the millions per season because it's broken down per episode. So a lot of times she wasn't getting paid what y'all thought she was getting paid, but they were parading her around acting like she was getting paid all this money. Now, there's that. There's some other tea. Now, um, other things. Um, you remember Candy? And was it Kenya who outed that Candy was getting the most money because Candy was damn in damn near every episode? Y'all remember that? Okay. Peep game now, peep game. It said um fans begin to note that uh she wasn't there during the start of the seasons uh because of reported contract negotiations. Uh, either she missed seasons altogether or was shown in fewer episodes than normal. During those times, it was also reported um, in the public, you know, that she was being a diva and wanted more things. But there are several instances the former housewife was demanding change and fair treatment. Um, I got sidebars often noted by Housewives fans that RHOA was the most popular show on Bravo and notably the first all black ensemble after Kim Zosiak Beerman's N word promotion uh, did not receive the same incentives as all, the all Caucasian ensembles y'all remember when everybody was like why is the housewives of atlanta going to savannah we were shocked why is the housewives of atlanta going down the street they're going to destin when they go to some part of florida yes. <laughs> why is that you know <laughs> then you got these these white women going to italy going to all these different Dubai places yes that first made trip was africa remember mm -hmm. and it was like season five mm -hmm. and you've been a different one show on the whole network but these other shows are bringing in mere ratings and they were going everywhere. Now this is the gag right here too. I gotta I gotta bring this to y'all attention. This, this is on the YouTube. This one I had started doing on YouTube. That being said, there was an infamous, infamous behind the scenes text discussion with all of the RHOA ladies during the Black Lives Matter movement where they all wanted to go to the network as a group for requests such as employee health care breaks, reimbursement of expenses, etc. But apparently one housewife broke code and went at it alone. Y'all remember we talked about that and, and Portia talked about it and Candy talked about it too. Because Nene had leaked the text or somebody had leaked the text. But, um, you know, they was in a group text. They wanted to go to Bravo since Bravo had pledged a hundred million donation towards diversity and inclusion. And inclusion. And while many thought that that was going to, uh, you know, make things better. Uh, they sought change. Another housewife of color. Who was it, y'all? Put it in the in the chat. Y'all remember which housewife of color saw dollar signs and went behind the back of the ladies to ask for things that she felt would be of greater benefit without the overall consensus of the group. So while y'all say, "Oh, Candy asked for interns and Candy asked for you know um, a, a a race in America." And Candy asked for, you know, more black producers. And Candy asked for this and Candy asked for that. While Candy was asking for the more black producers and a production team, it was her production team that was getting the benefit. The benefit. There's a screenshot right here where um, where uh, Portia was reading some of the text messages. And she said, Candy, uh, somebody said, Candy didn't think this was about Black Lives Matter. Where has she been? So Candy was like, this ain't a black, black, black lives matter. This is about, you know, uh, building a, our brands and all this stuff. Child, it was just a mess. So y'all could go back and watch it. Uh, put a one in the chat if y'all want to watch a clip of it now, honey. We could go back in the archives because it's right there on the YouTube. Let me know. Put a one in the chat if you want to watch it now. Put a two in the chat if you want me to just keep going because it's a whole lot of stuff. This is years, years of documentation. You said one. I'm gonna see what y'all. I see creative vibes. Said one. Okay, I see a lot of ones. I see some too. Let me go. I ain't gonna watch the whole thing, but I'll watch a little bit. Let me let me go. Let me flip the link. Hold on. Let me see because I got it at the. Uh, 
It's at the 20 something minute mark, 27 minute mark. People. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Yeah, I remember when Portia welcome, was. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just going to take a moment so that everyone who turned their notifications on can come on in the Let room and get our show needed to mirror what was happening in our real life. You know, a lot of people were dealing with uh, the social injustice and seeing our black people being killed. And I just felt like, well, that should be mirrored on a show that is called a reality show. It should actually show what we're going through. That would be the proper and responsible thing to do. Um, so with that being said, that comes with a certain level of responsibility when you do something like that. And for me, you know, I know y'all have noticed this season. I really don't take a lot of part in the tweeting back and forth with the reads and the Instagram comments back and forth. Listen, it's hard because I'm human. And if someone's saying something about you, then you naturally want to easily respond to it in your phone. But I have really tried to just keep it on the show. That's where I get paid to do it. And I'm going to do it on the show. Okay. When I leave from filming, I have a whole lot of other life to live. I'm a mommy. Um, I have a family. I have, you know, criminal justice work that I'm doing. And I have a whole career, other jobs, et cetera. Y'all know this, right? <laughs> so why do I want to continue that type of negativity or drama or whatever? That's just my personal choice. I know that you guys love that a lot of the ladies tweet and, you know, get at each other and read each other. Hold on. I, I want to see when she started talking about the text, honey. Why my efforts are what they are in concerning uh, criminal justice and Black Lives Matter. So however she feel, it's cool with me. Honestly, it really is cool with me. This particular, the reason I'm bringing this up is because there are some things that are in this article that are said to be facts, and they are not facts. These same things have been repeated on Speak On It on Candy's show. These same things have been repeated by Kenya on various outlets where they say there is a scene that was deleted, edited out, or not aired on Bravo because I asked for it to be taken out, right? Now, we know that a lot of housewives, they have power over the years. And they may be able to go and ask the heads to take something out, right? It is what it is. I have worked very hard to get to where I am in life. I have worked very hard on the show. And if I've gotten to a place where I can call the execs up and get something taken out, so be it, right? However, in this particular situation, the, the way that Kenya is putting it out there that I asked the Bravo execs to not play a scene of Candy and I having an argument, having a fight, me dogging Candy about her efforts is concerning Black Lives Matter is simply not true. What happened was, we're going to take it from the beginning. Nene, who was on our show, it's, uh, you know, at that last season, you know, Nene was on the show. Y'all know who the cast is. Anyway, Nene was doing an article and she was she sent some private text messages to a particular blogger and the blogger, the blogger. Out the text messages and they were received out of context the text messages the way the blogger put it out there was that i and uh, I, that Candy went behind the cast back and went to Bravo to try to get some programming done without telling us which blindsided us and which should make Candy look bad. So Candy got upset with that. And Candy um, decided to confront me about it on Housewives. So the whole season has happened. I mean, the beginning of the season happened and I had not seen any of the cast. This was my first scene with the cast, which was Todd's birthday. I walked into Todd's birthday and I was told Candy wanted to question me about something. And I said, okay, that's fine. I haven't done anything, happy to answer any of her questions. As soon as I walked into um, the party, Candy wanted to ask me about these texts. There are some texts out there that, you know, you're talking about what I was trying to get done for Black Lives Matter, et cetera. 
we were having a decent conversation. It was nothing to be upset about. And, and, and I thought, okay, this is fine because I have the text messages to prove that I never dogged you out. I've been pull, fully supportive of you, Candy, and Black Lives Matter. And whatever you're doing for our people. I love now, um, hold on. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna just stop it right there. <sighs> Y'all know I talked about it on my Pantheon, honey. This is where we start calling Pantheon, Pantheon. Let me go ahead and show y'all this text because I had to just go and pull it up real quick. Hold on. Let me see which window is it. I got so many. Hold on. They, they had screenshot my Pantheon, honey. They had screenshot my Pantheon. Look at it right there. Okay. I'm the blogger. The blogger. Okay. They said, um, this is somebody sending my video. Y'all see me? Y'all see me? Y'all remember my background right there? Um, they were sending it to Candy and um, they uh, said apparently the video that she was talking about us is very long. One of my fans sent me multiple clips that they screen recorded. I was told that straight from the A talked about it on her Pantheon and YouTube but it's clear that Nene screenshot our group text with everyone as well as the separate group text with just y'all and sent it to straight from the A. She sent her text of mine before. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, what had happened was I got a whole text thread of the ladies dragging candy. And it started a whole thing where they all had to, like, backtrack and, and, and twerk and, you know, kiss candy's ass because candy was pissed off. Okay. Um, hold on. This is the second part of that text. Hold on. Oh no, hold on, stop sharing. Share, which number is this? 1764. Share screen, 1764. Okay, this is the rest of it. But she said she sent her a text of mine before when we argued. So I'm not shocked that Nene has done this again. But I was surprised she sent y'all the text. Either way, I'm going to be honest and say that it pissed me off. To be clear, I never reached out to the network as if I was representing y'all. I was only speaking up for things that I wanted to see change. It didn't, I didn't realize y'all had an issue with it. And then Porsche well, said that the text read state stated facts that if you have already talked to them, if we were to ever approach them, we would have needed to know what exactly you said. So we don't either overstep or repeat a request. And as I continue to say. That with that being said, we should just move forward with the ask of a donation instead. It was stating that the fact of the matter, not talking crap about you in any way. So as I told you, they didn't want to overstep Candy. Like Portia was still kissing Candy's ass and saying, well, damn, since Candy already went, since Candy already broke code, we might as well go to her individually and ask for what we want. Because Candy has already, you know, went went and said this is what you know we should act for. So here go Candy. She was alluding to it being more said. That's why I was asking y'all what was said. Overall, I don't know what to think because again, I never knew y'all was. I guess she didn't know they had a whole group text honey without her, but they do, honey. They do. But anywho, and yes, I had the receipts and I did show them on my Pantheon. So if you want to go with my Pantheon again, we might talk about that tonight on the Pantheon. And I'll pull them up again because Candy is still inserting them texts that she wasn't in. <laughs> that she wasn't in, but I read them, okay? Now, um, yeah, that was just one of the many incidents, okay, about that text thread. And it pretty much was proven that candy went behind everybody back, yada, 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 yada. So um, then, you know, Portia went live and started talking about it. Then candy went live and started talking about it. And yeah, and then I, that's when I became the blogger, okay? Um, other than that, other than that, um, let me see. Wait, 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 wait. Here's the, 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 the uh, uh, This was another instance where Leak complained to execs and she was basically put on timeout for the next season as contract negotiations mysteriously stalled and soon came to a halt. But before you start side-eyeing the situation, there are other instances, you know, again, like I told you, it's 97 pages long. 
um, and I'm going to read them eventually. We're going to do a part two to this, um, and I'm going to discuss each and every one of them, okay? Uh, so, yeah, if you go to Straight from the A, I've written about it. And uh, and some people are saying on social media that, you know, Nene shouldn't do this. This is basically shutting the door to Bravo. She's closing the door. She can never come back. But y'all think about it. Nene ain't worked in three years. Nowhere. <laughs> that ain't funny, but she hasn't worked in three years. So that's why she putting on her thing, blacklisted, you know, whatever. Blacklisted for telling the truth and not wanting to be abused anymore. Blacklisted. Uh, certain um, opportunities have dried up. Remember, she was going to be working on Peacock. And Peacock is under the NBC umbrella. So what like, what could she do besides either file a lawsuit or sit there and just take the abuse? I'm never just going to sit back and take it. Even if I don't ever work in that industry again, uh -huh. you're not just going to do what you want to do. My camera was going to Can y'all hear me? Hopefully y'all can hear me. Um, so, um, in final, <laughs> like I was just saying about the three years, think about it. It's been at least three years since she worked on Bravo. She hasn't worked on television since. While y'all may have seen her on, you know, shows like The Real or that type of thing. Those are like pretty much unpaid gigs. You know, those are a promo and press. Uh, Tamara Hall and things like that. Those aren't jobs. She's not getting a check for those. Um, and you have to remember, she was dealing with her husband, you know, basically dying of cancer. You know, the whole last two years, you know, she was off work for three years. For two years, she was dealing with her husband and, you know, his cancer situation. Her husband passed away after a lengthy battle with cancer. And uh, again, many of her network uh, opportunities mysteriously disappeared. You know, she was working with several networks, uh, the Peacock, Zeus, uh, some other ones, and they mysteriously disappeared. They stuff just stopped. Maybe, you know, Bravo told them, look, you know, she's still under contract or she's still basically our talent. And so they, of course, Bravo don't want uh, anybody else utilizing Nini's face, likeness, and all of that when basically y'all see she trend every damn day so there's that um i would love to hear from you guys uh what do you think of this situation right not zeus okay i would love to think of they they fire in the chat oh i don't know i'm gonna take a few calls i'm gonna take a few calls just a few uh, y'all can agree with me. Y'all can disagree with me. Y'all can say how you feel. Please keep it at a minimum. Please, please, please. I know some of y'all want to talk all day long. I get it. But uh, you look, give me at least do it. two minutes, okay? Two minutes tops. Talk fast. <laughs> Click the link to join. Time when to start, start talking. Not, uh, you want to put a timer on there? Time. Okay, hold on. Okay. We got somebody back. Hey, Cree. How you doing? <laughs> Hey, Am Michelle, I, how you doing? I'm good. Am I pronouncing that right? It's Kriya. Okay, Kriya. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I've met you before, but hey. <laughs> I, don't, um, I don't understand why y'all so mad with candy. Who I think, How do we I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not a huge candy fan, but I think candy is like playing Bravo. I don't think Bravo is playing her. She has a lot of mouths to feed. She has businesses. She has a show with employees i think what candy doing is the right thing so candy is out for self and i guess some people yeah well okay. she's not really out for self she has a whole family and whole restaurants and people that work there but that's just like the 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 is the situation i told you where people are like well i got mouths to feed so it don't matter you know what you're going through it don't matter that people being treated unfairly let me make this money so i can feed my family why they keep stepping on us and calling us the n-word it's fine i'm good <laughs> no but that's what you're saying she got my she got a family she got employees yeah. she got this but she's working at a job where people are saying that there is a a a, a, a systematic you know candy. Uh, candy is on that show but she ain't on that show she just there she, on, on, Candy is on the Real Housewives of Atlanta just to promote her other play, her other businesses. That's why everybody says she's boring. That's why Candy need to go. She's just sitting on that show so she can make so she can have a platform for 
OLG and and the Candy and the Gang or whatever. She ain't there to uh get the ratings for R O A or what R O H A and she's there for herself and her shows. But at what cost, as Dr. say? Yeah, but you know, I'm with Nene on this, but I'm not with Nene on this. Okay. I, I I'm with her, but I'm not with her. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I listen, it we can sit here all day long and, and pontificate in the court of public opinion. But yeah. if she got receipts and all of these things, you know, line up, then you know. Yeah, I think yeah. something is going on with Bravo though, because it's too many shows but just you know that that are now just coming out with uh black people on the cast and they had all these shows all these years and nobody no not a soul on none of these shows but now within the last what year year or two they're starting to bring black women in so uh, you know i hope she wins because she does have a leg to stand on but um but you know i do think bravo was racist but i'm ready for you to be on something i'm here right here what's me I'm, I'm ready for you to be on the network. I ain't doing no reality TV. Y'all ain't gonna make No, not a reality TV. I'm ready for you to have your own little show. I got it. It's right here. I know, but I'm, I want I want to see you on a bigger screen. Put me on the TV. Okay. I, listen, I love my life. Okay. I have a good you time. Great, you I, have I, a great I life. Nobody. I love your platform. I, but yeah, I'm just saying, with I all your talents, you, the world, the world needs to see you. Oh, every God. day at four o'clock. <laughs> I got a bunch of videos. You can when four o'clock comes, just click play. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Thank I, you I really so do. much. Thank you. You're welcome, Michelle. All right. Bye bye. Oh no. All right, you ready? Yep. One, two, three. Oh, look at a locker. Look at hey, all Michelle. <laughs> hey, hey, how are I you? Like hey, Joe. Right pretty. Thank you. It stops for people having to peek into my house. Okay. Uh, <laughs> how are you doing, Josh? Good to see I'm you. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm not too bad. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, first of all, Michelle, for coming early. Um, <laughs> coming early enough because, oh, when I heard about this, I was like, oh my gosh, it's about damn time. We were waiting for this to happen. And you know what? All those people that kept on saying, why is she doing it now? Why is she doing it now? They need they now have their answer. Okay. In the in the lawsuit, right? It states that she's been actually addressing this for years. Oh, you know, and they've not been doing anything about it. And it also answers the question. People are asking, or you know, trying to assume she's being a diva, this and the other, where she's appearing like three episodes in, etc. That sort of thing. It answers that question as well. So people need to stop trying to speculate to say, oh, she's a diva, she's this and the other. If Nini was that bad to work with, how could she have possibly made it into Broadway? A very right. disciplined work environment. I was, not twice. twice. What, three times? Okay. You know what I mean? You know, she's been hired um, on Glee. She got hired on the new normal as one of the original cast members. If her work ethic was that bad, why would they have had her there? Right. You see what I mean? So they need to stop with that, like she's bad to work with this and the other. At the end of the day, they want to talk about her attitude based on her having Twitter fingers. Donald Trump has got Twitter fingers. 50 Cent is literally one of the biggest trolls. But how many deals has he got with um, stars? Right. You know what I mean? So yeah. if someone decides they're not being heard enough and they feel the need to have to go on social media just to get the conversation going, no matter which way they decide to go about it, allow them that. Give them that space. Don't try and put out statements like the way um, Candy and Cynthia are trying to find a way to kind of negate you know, Nini's feelings. And I think that's not fair and that's not right. And I think it's so stupid of them considering they banded together to get rid of Kim Zosiak because of her privileged behavior. Right. Right. You know, I, I just, it's, it's about time. That and he is the one who has to like stand alone now mm -hmm. because of, you know, because she was, you know, very outspoken and vocal over mm -hmm. the years mm -hmm. about the things that were happening. Right. But people don't see that. But it's yeah, in black and white now. It's in the lawsuit and people still saying, oh, it's frivolous. All oh, it's this, all oh, it's that. If, if they didn't know that all of these people and all of these different franchises mm -hmm. and all these different umbrellas on, you know, it's like, how can you ignore it? You can't. There's only so much you can be willing to take at the end of the day. You know, Nini was clearly trying to look at it in a situation. She's like, look, I'm, if I am the highest paid, if I'm the face of Bravo, I'm going to try and utilize this opportunity to try and talk to them. Hopefully, like you said, they'll listen to me. Clearly, they did not listen to her, but they decided instead to reprimand her, you know, which I find is very interesting considering, 
all the fights that have happened on the white shows, how many of them have been reprimanded for that? Portia got reprimanded for, for, for dragging Kenya. Okay, she got demoted mm -hmm. for that. You know, nobody pays attention to that, you know. So people thinking this is a selfish move by Nini, even if it goes Nini's way or not, guess what's going to happen? NBC is going to have to step up because now they're going to be afraid that, right. oh, Nini's opened the door. You know, the door might be closed for her to go back on Housewives, but guess what? The door is now wide open for other people to sue. That's what this has done. So whether it goes in her favor or not, which, by the way, I'm hoping she sees it all the way through. You know, because mm. I'm sure they're going to try and see if they can pay her off and stuff like that. But she actually has got substance, not only about stuff that's happened behind the scenes, but stuff that we, the viewers, have witnessed and right. have not understood why nothing's been done about all the atrocities we've seen happen, not just on Housewives of Atlanta, but on the white shows where they've done some really horrible derogatory things against black people and people of color. So, yeah, you know, I'm happy for this. I'm happy. I look forward to hearing more of, you know, what you've got in the... In the and, you know, of course, I'll share more on Patreon. I'll share more yeah. of the documents and everything. I just don't want to give it all away because I, right. I want people to go get it themselves. Right, you know right, right. <laughs> so, no, thank I, you so I, much, Michelle. I'll leave you so other people can come in. <laughs> I, 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 I appreciate it. And Josh, it's so good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you. Bye. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Bye. We don't have nobody in the bed. Okay, so Josh, I've been over talking to you since you don't have. Oh mic. no, you are fine. I don't got everything I need to get in. You did? Yeah. You got your notes and everything. You well, did. I just want to let people know who the person was because she was suing. Oh, okay. You know, but I would love to see who the other twenty-five people that she's suing is. The Jane and John Doe. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to know who the Jane and John Doe did. But I'm telling you, Nene, if you're watching, I think you should call a producer that I know have a lot of. Emails and text messages. Who Ooh, you know? Who? Who said that? And it's up for her to figure it out because I know they're watching. I got a lot of text messages too. So you should call them. They can help you settle your case a lot earlier than you expected. Christmas can come in July. Mm -hmm. So I just think it's. I think she's on the right track, and I think <clears throat> just. <clears throat> I think history will show that she did the right thing. I think time will tell. We look now at different heroes and we look at different people who, not saying Nene's going to be a hero, but we look back at different people who stood up for something that they believed in. And in the moment, nobody believed in anything they were talking about. Mm. Then years later, we look back and we honor them and we respect them and they were so great and stuff like that. But how long did it take for them to get that recognition? Right. So I feel like go, Nene, go, because I feel like you will have the last laugh. Mm -hmm. And in her words, you never win when you play dirty. You never win when you play dirty. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. I'm with Josh. Nene will be remembered for her courage. Okay. Y'all said the same thing about uh, Monique. Y'all said the same thing about Colin Kaepernick. Y'all said the same thing about a lot of people. Then people are like, well, why would they want to go back and work for X, Y, Z? Why would who else Colin Kaepernick gonna play for besides the NFL? I mean, you know, that's gonna you know compensate him for his talent. Who else is Nene gonna go and work for besides NBC uh, or a big conglomerate that's gonna compensate? You. What? Think about how everyone drugs Monica Lewinsky. Mm -hmm. Now she's on so many boards for diversity and inclusion. Mm -hmm. And was she hundred percent innocent? No. But look at how many book deals she's got, and now how many things that she's benefited from for being now she was being but she even got the president of the united states to apologize to her joe biden had to apologize to her before he could win his presidency so take your hits now and as soon as you get your settlement make sure you sit on the board of nbc true entertainment truly entertainment and stuff but they take your money take your power maybe you might not work back as talent but you'll sit on the board and say hey this is right this is wrong i will be sitting on the board of inclusion there you go that's how you get your power back. There you go. Wait a minute. I want to read uh, Georgia Peaches' uh, super chat. Said, "Will Nene work? Need to work after this? They will settle. The details of her lawsuit are very damaging. She will get wages lost from block deals. Episodes of RHOA lost and compens compensatory damages. NBC millions. Okay, Georgia Peach. Listen, and people keep saying like, you know, she shouldn't do this. It shuts the door and blah blah blah. If she ain't been working in three years, like the door was already closed. The door was already closed. 
She already wasn't working. She already hustling, making her money, doing whatever she got to do. And y'all talking about some, uh, they're going to blacklist her some more. How they going to blacklist her some more? <laughs> like Monique, she too could be standing beside Andy one day. He publicly apologized. Mm. I, I don't put anything out of when you're doing something right and when you're staying. Okay. Well, there's that. Well, I appreciate you guys tuning in and thank you to all who called and contributed to the stream. I did. This is part one of the breaking down the docs. Hopefully other bloggers will follow suit and stop just reading the surface and acting like it's all about Kim Zosiak because it is not all about Kim Zosiak. But everybody going to tell you that. Everybody is not going to tell you that. Anyway, if you just get here, go ahead and like this video, please. And thank you. Uh, also subscribe if you are not subscribed. Uh, put your thoughts in the comment section. Let me know, you know, after this video is over and you watching the replay and you rewinding and you seeing all the receipts and you clicking all the links over on straight from the A, you looking at all the history and you breaking it down year by year by year. Let me know if you think she got a case. If you was in her shoes, what would you have done? Uh, Natasha's hair souffle says, peace be still. I went through what Nini's, what I went through what Nini's has been off work over a year. Today, I got a call for an offer to back pay me with interest for you. Hi, hey, God is good. God is good all the time, honey. Listen. <laughs> or you can go off and then not be able to go sit back on the Let me just. <laughs> Y'all know I got a whole video out there where I broke down, honey. When I, it's called, uh, I got fired from a six-figure gig. And. <laughs> You know, things come in full circle, Joshua. You know how you saw my boss was over here today. Right. Like, <laughs> my ex boss from the lottery. <laughs> I used to be his executive assistant. He was executive of sales, executive vice president of sales and marketing. And he was over here today checking, trying to figure out what I what I want done on my house because that's what he he retired. And that's what he's no, he doing his fun. spare time. Right. And so I'm like, things are really full circle. He sat here for an hour. We was talking about old ass lottery stories and stuff. But you got to understand you are where you are meant to be. I could have been miserable right now sitting at a desk typing out spreadsheets or something. But but they fired my ass after I complained about discrimination and I sued their ass. But I ain't get no money though because it's a whole nother story. But <laughs> but yeah, at the time I remember saying, "Damn, if the tables were turned, I would have never complained because I would have still been at the lottery. I would still been making my six figures. I would still been getting my bonuses every year." But listen, Can you tell the story? I made more money now than I ever made at the lottery. But go ahead, Michelle. This is how good God is. Michelle, we were right around one day, and she was like, "I used to look at this house where her one of her ex bosses lived." She's like, I always dream like, damn, I wish I would have a house like that one day. I, oh, my God, like her house is so fabulous. Now my friend lives in a house better than hers. Not too far from her, though. But just it's funny how God, like, full circle. Yeah, she was a CEO of the lottery. She was a CEO of the lottery. Yeah. Can you imagine somebody that was an administrative assistant going past someone who was the CEO of a company that she worked for, now lives in a neighborhood not too far from her <laughs> in a bigger and better house than her? I mean, really, it gets no better than that. Humbly speaking, but not humbly speaking, God is good. It, God is good. God is good. But it didn't happen overnight. So a lot of these bloggers out there who be like, oh, Michelle, this Michelle, that, honey, I've been doing, like I keep telling y'all, I've been doing it for 16 years. Y'all just see YouTube and think, oh, that's just where she at, honey. Just think about where I've been. It ain't nothing a blogger out here that did that I haven't done. Nothing. No event. No event. <laughs> No VIP, nothing. no nothing. It ain't nothing that any other blogger out there has done that that is doing now that I haven't done. I did it all. I've been on shows. I've, I've done stuff. I just ain't done what y'all wanted me to do, but I've done stuff. I've been on the news. I've been all over the place. But anywho, but uh, I always say, you know, now I freedom comes where you can choose what to do when you wake up. That's why when y'all always, we was talking about this earlier too, when y'all always be like, Michelle, what time are you coming on? Michelle, what time you coming? Oh, yeah, yeah. She said that earlier. She said that earlier. I get triggered because I, I do not want to be bound by the chains of time. <laughs> I used to be late going to work at the lottery every day. And my boss would be mad at me. But, uh, yeah, now I, I come on when I want to. Okay. So, yes, God is good. And I appreciate all y'all for supporting me. I would be able to do this. And, uh, you know, look, y'all contributed to the stream and stuff and everything. 
And it's hard work. Like you keep being consistent and doing whatever you want to do, whatever that is. It may not be blogging. It may be, you know, doing flowers. It may be sewing but dresses. I think history will show in your blogging throughout the years that you always stand with the black woman. Even if you might not like the black woman long term, Kaya stood with her. Like you stood on your own moors, you're going to stand with the black woman. Whether they out there by themselves, be like, okay, that girl, I'm with you. Yeah. Even if you stab me in the back, I'm with you. Yeah. So I think it'll be worth it. And I always tell y'all too, like, straight from the A is my intellectual property. I own straight from the A. I own the trademark straight from the A. I've been owning it for like 10, 15 years now. It's my business. Everything I do falls under my straight from the A umbrella. Now, I, I stopped working for a year. And, and you were able to do that on the website, but I still was. Yeah. So listen, do follow your heart. Do what you want to do. Um, if you listen, if you get fired, it's not the end of the world. Just know, uh, you know, God may have a greater path for you. He may have a greater path for Nene Leaks. Who knows? It is a greater path for Nene Leaks. Mm -hmm. Better. The best is yet to come. Exactly. And again, that's why, you know, a lot of y'all be like, why y'all, why you support her, you know, for these past couple of years? Because I knew a lot of this stuff. I've been blogging about a lot of this stuff. I, and, and it's crazy because, you know, she and I weren't always cool. You know? I remember she was tweeting about it. <laughs> she and I weren't always cool. These, these were things that I was seeing with my own eyes. KKK Kim. Why do you think I named her KKK Kim? And why did, you know, and why would I talked about how Bravo put all of this on um on their networks that I talked about it and I was like this is crazy how they would allow all of these racial undertones and I would always talk about it so anyway I digress uh if you want to go watch that video <laughs> please do but don't judge me for my ugly cry when I talked about uh getting fired from my six-figure gig because when I say I at the time I was sitting in this beautiful condo I had in Bucky I was overlooking the city of Atlanta and I just bust out crying because talking about it took me there y'all don't understand how us as black women can suffer from ptsd from being you know discriminated against from facing racism for all the things we have to sit and stand silent by simply because we need our jobs simply because we know that we're not going to be taken seriously so when i see something like this of course <laughs> See, Patterson said back when I was on Candy and Phaedra's payroll, exactly. The lipstick alleys and everywhere else said that Candy was paying me back then. Now y'all say Nene paying me. At the end of the day, you know who's paying me? You guys are paying me. And I appreciate each one of y'all for paying me. Natasha said, I have faith. I use Nene's phrase. You can't win. Fighting dirty. God sees everything. <laughs> Uh, I lost my unborn child due to work stress during this process causes Aww. anxiety and high blood pressure. Listen, I, I'm going to blame my job for all the things I went through. My fibroids, my this, my that, like all of that stuff is, is related to stress. Your body starts to, you know, fight itself when you are stressed out. You hold it, all this stuff in. Fibroids just feeding off of my hormones, honey. But anyway, I'm digressing. I'm digressing. I just wanted to end on that note and let y'all know that um, there are reasons why I take things personally. And yes, I'm biased. I'm, I'm human. <laughs> I am not Flopso. I am not Fox News. I am not NBC, ABC, CBS. I am straight from A.com, which is me, Michelle Brown. And Michelle Brown has thoughts, feelings, and emotions. And of course, I'm going to talk about things that I have thoughts, feelings, and emotions about. That's why you don't see me blogging about everything. You don't see me talking about every little thing because I don't really care about every little thing. I can talk about what I care about. I can slap my talk about we know. Whatever. But I appreciate each and uh, every one of y'all. Again, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Okay, go and subscribe to Joshua's channel, Just a Superstar, even though he ain't. <laughs> when are you going to do a video? I am retired. <sighs> Natasha said, Michelle, the stress causes your progesterone levels to lower when pregnant, causing you to miscarry. I pray everyone stay positive and God work. Prayers to you, Natasha. And I'm so sorry for your loss. And I listen, I completely understand. I completely understand. I got to do a whole video again talking about fibroids and all the procedures that I have been through. And, you know, listen, finally, I'm, I'm over it. But um, yeah, so anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, don't forget to like this video and share. 
uh, go subscribe to Just a Superstar, okay? Thank you to everybody who um, contributed to the stream. And uh, if you want to join my Patreon for, you know, a little bit more in-depth information, because I give them everything, go over to patreon.com. I am ATLian. The link is in the description box. We will be doing one later tonight. Okay, later tonight. Gotta go eat. I don't know what time it's gonna be. Probably be about 10 or 11-ish. Uh, so I will see y'all in the next video. Good night. Shaggy. These people don't like me, yeah, but that's my. <laughs> that's my. Fuck them hoes. Ain't that right, Brandon? Hey. Wait, wait, wait. No, what you okay. want to say? Here we go. Hey, I'm Dr. Heavenly, and this is straight from the A. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put the disclaimer out there. If me and Michelle actually get into a like, fight during we this ain't interview, fight. just know she I started. Don't, I okay. Don't fight. Now what else is going? on? I might pull your wig. Hey, what's up, y'all? This is your girl Candy, and you are logged in to straight from the A.com. And you know, hey, I gotta represent because I'm straight from the A. Hey, what's up, y'all? I am your girl Candy, hanging out with straight from the A. You know, I love you guys. I always visit the site. Hey, Michelle, girl. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you just won't let me be great. Who are you, Michelle? You just, you get me every time, girl. You ain't gonna miss nothing, is you? This is Tyler Perry, and if you want the truth, a lot of blogs don't tell the truth. Straight from the A.com. That's what you check out. And you love us, don't you? <laughs> <laughs>